Chi. Well, thanks very much. Uh, I think I've spoken in this room about two and a quarter years ago. The first thing I have to say is it's very dark in here, isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? It's like... Uh, but already I'm at home because it's got that nice sort of horror film atmosphere. <laughs> so, I'd like to start by talking about the European elections. Now, there's been a radical right in Britain and in England since the 1920s, since about 1922, in fact. Um, but no one has ever been elected to a parliament until around a month ago. And two candidates were elected, as everyone knows, because it went round the world on almost every bulletin that was going. One in the northwest of England and one in Yorkshire. Andrew Bronze, who I probably met about 20 years ago, and as a former chairman of the National Front, uh, probably never thought that he would actually be going to the European Assembly later on in his life. Now, it's quite clear that there's a bedrock vote for this organisation, particularly in the north of England, but not exclusively so. Simon Darby was almost elected in the West Midlands, and Eddie Butler, the Eastern Regional Organiser, who's just been made National Organiser, was only around 22, 23, maybe at the outside 25,000 votes from being elected in the Eastern Region. So this is a remarkable transformation, which is coming at the end of New Labour's life. Just as Callaghan in the 1970s, if people remember him, was the fag end of the Wilson era, we have another fag end of a declining and decadent Labour Party, and this is the Brown period the brown zone at the end of the Blair era. It's quite clear, if you look right across the country, that with the odd rotten borough accepted, Labour is in terminal decline. They've got a lower councillor base than at any time since the 1950s. They have a lower number of Euro MPs than at any time since we entered what was then the common market. They do not control London. They do not control many big cities. And everywhere where people have a chance to vote against them, they take an opportunity to do so. Of course, this means they vote for other parties like Plaid in Wales, the SNP in Scotland, the Liberals in certain northern cities and so on. And in the south of England and in the Midlands, they vote Conservative just to get Labour members out in areas where their majorities are relatively thin. The media was aghast when the British National Party won two seats late at night when they were counted up a couple of days after the reckoning. I was listening to it at about two in the morning on Radio 5 Live and for a moment, they were speechless because radio accentuates the sound of the voice because you don't get the nature of the image to interfere with it. Several of the commentators, it was late at night, admittedly, and they'd been on for five to seven hours before this event, lost their voices and were flummoxed for a period because they never thought they would see radical right individuals returned to the European Parliament. In the studio, they had the uh, leader of the initiative called London Black Vote. And he said, it's a nightmare. He said, it's a living nightmare. He said, six months ago, I was celebrating the victory of Obama. We were all celebrating that victory, he said. And now we're sending, rude word beginning with F, individuals <laughs> to the European Parliament. Now, is it the uh, beginning of something very big in the society as Labour dies? I think the first thing the radical right has to do is to secure its own vote. 943,000 people voted for this political party, primarily for it to the north of the Midlands, but also elsewhere. There were worrying signs. The vote in London, in a sense, should have been bigger, but the enormous demographic changes in London are such that this is what we face in some of the big cities like London and Birmingham. Nevertheless... This is an extraordinary event because the uh, wall of sand has had a crack through it and has come unstuck and has partly gone down. And politics in the society will never quite be the same again. What you have to do, in my opinion, is to instaurate or to build upon or to make iron hard the largely, but not exclusively, working class vote in the north of England in particular. You have to make your own vote, particularly at European elections, but also at others, impregnable. You have to mean that all the lies and all the rest of it have virtually no effect. The Manchester Evening News run an extraordinary campaign of propaganda in the northwest of England in the two or three weeks before the poll. Quite unbelievable stuff, which hasn't been seen for several decades, in fact. Interestingly, it was taken down a tier because the Guardian Group owns that Manchester rag. Two weeks before the poll, this Manchester newspaper said... Um, the truth about the British National Party, the Nazi National Party and Nazis, 
50 years ago, these people turned people into soap. Picture of a bar of soap. If you vote for this party in the northwest of England, you are endorsing this sort of thing. There was no restraint at all from the Manchester Evening News, which is, in a regional sense, the guardian of another level. Interestingly, and partly as a result of a campaign against them and against some of their advertisers, pointing out that a considerable number of their would be consumers actually might well vote for this political party in the northwest of England, there was a certain resiling and a certain backtracking, which you get in the media these days, particularly when their money is affected because many of these journals are quite hard up. Guardian Group is teetering on the edge. The Independent is on the brink of collapse. We can see major changes in media ownership just as we're seeing major demographic change, major political change, major party change. There are many things to do. This party has to attract more middle class voters. You can't win without them. And it's noticeable that UKIP has broken off a part of those people who vote Conservative in their sleep without thinking about it. The interesting thing is in the South East, the UKIP vote went down, and UKIP is there. And UKIP is, or contains people who are partly sympathetic, only partly, but in politics, the point is to bring people along. Politics is about energy and what you can do when a certain role begins. People who are quite moderate now and would never touch us with a barge pole in five years if the situation is different will be coming up to us in the street saying, oh, you know, I agreed with you all along. And this is the situation that we have. Now, I remember I had a dinner once with Jean-Marie Le Pen, the former leader of the French Front National, about 20 years ago. And when I was on the fringe of the right wing of the Conservative Party at that time and attended a group the day after, half the people in the audience booed and half of them cheered. And I think UKIP's the same. There are people in UKIP who can be detached and broken away, who want something slightly harder, something more robust, because UKIP's MEPs are meaningless. The only time they get in the media after they're elected is one of them is, elect, is uh, found out to be corrupt or engaged in benefit fraud like Ashley Moat, and he's dragged off. That's the only time the media notices them. They're led by a power like Farage, but how much does he really talk about those sorts of issues? So the interesting thing is the breaking down of British politics as the Labour and Tory blocks and the Liberals sandwiched in between them fracture and break. 15% of people say they will never vote for the mainstream parties again. And there is immense hatred, that is not too strong a word, amongst primarily working class white people in the big cities for Labour and for the Labour political machine. As lots of Labour MPs face disgrace over the humiliating uh, shenanigans that they got involved with in relation to their own expenses and as they stare at an election which is eight to ten months hence and they face major defeats in their own areas they're getting to a point where they don't even like confronting their own voters anymore. Even when the Tories won in Norwich the other day they were appalled privately by the amount of anti-establishment and anti-political venom on the doorstep that was given to all of the mainstream parties even the one that got the vote. And the Tories only won that seat because the Labour vote stayed at home, partly out of a residual sympathy in a mild and complicated way for a dissentient former Labour MP who some people thought was unfairly treated. Well, we passed judgment on that, but uh, there is a degree to which probably the electors of his constituency didn't intend his daughter to live in a flat at their expense, but that's just another matter. If you notice, the whole of the Westminster class, Tory, Liberal and Labour, and some of the minority parties in and around Westminster of a Celtic hue have been involved in this corruption for a very long time. Tony Blair's mysterious transformation from an obscure lawyer to an absolute multiple millionaire by virtue of various properties that were acquired in and around Canterbury Square in Islington and elsewhere, all of the papers in relation to which were shredded retrospectively, is a very interesting transformation to behold. But all of these people will have their comeuppance. And uh, when Brown said he wanted the inquiry about the Iraq war to be held in camera or in private, it was to spare Blair, his old rival and enemy, within New Labour. Blair secretly fears that if there is a public tribunal about the Iraq war and the lies that got us into it half a decade ago, he will become, in his own words, an object of hatred. Well, the poor little chap, you know, he'll become an object of hatred. The truth is he's an object of hatred already for large parts of the population. And you have to say a lot of our people were very naive because in 97 the numbers of us that agreed with the Blair smile and the cheesiness and the talks of whiter than white and how he was going to do things for education and how he was tough on crime and tough on...